know how many hours there are in a week? Let me open that to you, Shane, in the Midlands. Um, no, never enough. <laughs> yeah, that's true, especially as you have two young kids. Well, let's do the math together. Uh, seven times 24. The so, maths? No, I'm doing the Americanized math. Yeah. Only the one. <laughs> Don't be anti-American. Certainly not this early into the show. We need our American listeners. Uh, <laughs> seven times 24. I'm going to do seven twenties first, which is 140, and seven fours are 28, so that's uh, 168. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and the reason for asking, spoiler alert, I knew the spoiler already, uh, is because this is episode 168 of the Comedy Slab. Nice to have you along. If it's your first, a special welcome and an equally special welcome, but in a more sort of tired, over-familiar way, if you're a regular listener. Welcome. Well, and the what? other thing is as well, if, if they're listening back to back and they started last week, they're coming to the end of a very long week of listening, aren't they? That's true. Actually, yes, you could do that, couldn't you? So um, that is an option. Wall-to-wall listening for a week. You could do it for charity. <laughs> do a yeah. lot of good work for charity. Um, <laughs> there's a sponsorship idea for another occasion. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm in the southeast of England. I am Adrian Lacey. You've heard him already uh, to, uh, to distraction. Um, he is Shane O'Connor in, as I say, the Midlands uh, of England. And collectively, we put uh, a different comedy, be it TV, radio, or podcast, or other digital format, onto the notional slab of comedy, prodded about a bit. Um, a regular listener, loyal listener Dave, let's call him, um, talked about of, of us as uh, comedy pathologists. <laughs> but I said, well, technically, you know, if we like the comedy, we're probably vivisectionists, because we think it's writhing around with plenty of energy. There's an image. Um, so we'll see whether uh, this week's show is uh, dead or alive um, in just a moment. But um, the, the show is Nighty Night with the wonderful Julia Davis, uh, writer and uh, star of uh, Series 2, Episode 6, so the, uh, the grand finale. Putting that to one side, and you might think this is um, a bit on the serious side for a comedy slab, but I guess we're mentioning it because he is a very versatile performer by the name of Steve Coogan, um, known, obviously, and we're always trotting out our Alan Partridge anecdotes. But here, uh, we like to have a little dip into comedy news, but this is more sort of um, news of a drama by a uh, comedy actor, stroke comedian, stroke serious performer who is steve mm. coogan and he's to play jimmy savile in a bbc one drama series called the reckoning what were your thoughts when you saw this as a news item well it set the internet alight didn't it it was quite interesting that that people um in the main uh from what i could gather looking at the at the thread were incandescent with rage that he would even consider doing such a thing um, it's a trial by twitter isn't it really before you've even yeah. done anything which, which I kind of find really. I mean, he's he's a, like you said. He's you know he's an accomplished actor now, mm. and why wouldn't he? I suppose is the is the is the question. Not why would he? You know, as, mm. as if to say, I, I did get the whole thing of um, that whether it should be done by the BBC, and 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 a lot of people are objecting to that. And I kind of get that because I think I think there's always the danger, and I think they've done this in the past that you know it it falls at the hand of revisionist history. Did you feel Be that about the BBC documentaries or documentary? Can't remember if there was more than one on yeah, Savile. Yeah, I kind of it's it's oh, there's it's a, a panorama, difficult, I think. Yeah, and and, and I'm, you know, am I being critical here because it's a kind of it's it's I suppose if I'm being critical of anything, it's of them trying to attempt to pretend impartiality where it's a difficult line to tread, isn't it? You know, when you're when you're doing making a, an investigative program about your your own organisation, I kind of get that. But and to me, that's the only. I mean, that's not. It's still not a big deal. But I kind of think, yeah, if it was Channel Four or ITV that were doing it, then it would probably have less 
I was going to say fewer people getting angry with it, but I'm not really quite sure that's that that would be the case either. And I think they people, still get angry with Steve Coogan, yeah, wouldn't they? And they like they like to get outraged by the whole Savile thing as well, really. But mm. um, you know, I kind of think, why wouldn't he do it? Really, I mean, what about you? And did, did you were well, you outraged? Um, no, not at all. But. Um I it's almost like I've had a dress rehearsal because I uh, a friend of mine invited me to see um and this sounds quite bizarre uh, given that his name's in the title but there was a he said uh, oh, come along to this stage show called an evening with Jimmy Savile and immediately I I did make an internal judgment about that I didn't r- leap to go on to um Twitter about it mm. but then um then my friend uh, Gary who invited me to this is Gary with two R's I've got two Gary friends um, one with one arm, one with two, just you know, in case anyone needs to know. But well, did, uh, did the one did the one lose an R in an accident? Or was it, uh, <laughs> no. Did you, did well, you funny enough, one? it would be handy. I, I call the other one Gary Potter because he worked on all the Harry Potter films. Very accomplished oh, yeah. art director. But he <laughs> should have two Potter. R's if anyone should. So he could be Gary Potter. But you know, it doesn't quite work. No. Um, anyway, so the other Gary with two R's. Um, uh, said, well, in the lead, it's Alistair McGowan, and immediately I'm intrigued. Um, my, my question there, it wasn't sort of fuming at the mouth, it was, why why is there a show like that? But immediately, you, the, the, the finger points back at yourself anyway, because, well, if, if I've got a problem with it, why am I going to see it? So I'm obviously intrigued. Yeah. And that's what the people on, you know, leaping to rage on Twitter or wherever else, other anti-social media... They haven't stopped to think, have they? And that they're implicated. They're obviously so fascinated that they have to. They've got an opinion about it, even the, without the, seeing it. As there's something with with Savile, isn't it? I don't know if it's because he was in the the entertainment world and because it was in plain sight. Maybe I don't know. But like mm. I was just thinking, I was just looking at some of the some of the stuff the production team had done previously, and they did the um, appropriate adult thing, which was um, which was telling the story of uh, Fred and Rose West, but predominantly Fred West. Is it the same team? Are you saying? Uh, it's uh, it's the same writer and the same uh, executive producer, uh, 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 Neil Mackay and uh, and Jeff Pope. Right. Um, and I think they won a BAFTA for that. Actually, it was a, it's, if you get the chance to see it, appropriate adult, it's fantastic. It's really, really well done. Um, but there didn't seem to be the same indignation that that there was for for Fred West. And when you think of the crime, I mean, well, you think murder is is is. It's difficult, isn't it? You're a hierarchy of crimes now, you know, so what yeah. is one worse than the other? I mean, if you're the victim of anything, that's surely the worst as far as you're concerned. So it's difficult to start, start, you know, laying them out in a, in a sequence, isn't it, in that sense? I don't, I don't know. I just, I think it's, it's a story. I think it's the catharsis of this, isn't it? There's, it's a story that has to be told, definitely. Whether it's, whether the BBC are the right people to tell it, I'm not so sure, but... Um, but- well, I would have a different question, and it's not because I do work for the BBC. Um, it's more that hasn't the story been told numerous times already? Um, not not in the dramatisation, I don't think it has, has it? Right. Well, can I just uh, quote uh, Jeff Pope, so the um, director, who you were telling me earlier, uh, or reminding me, is not the same Jeff Pope who's uh, in the music world. Um, I mean, such... Uh, talented all-rounders do exist, but they're two d- separate people. So, director of this uh, upcoming Savile drama, Jeff Pope, comments, the purpose of this drama is to explore how Savile's offending went unchecked for so long and in shining a light on this to ensure such crimes never happen again. Now, that's putting the bar very high of a TV show to ensure such crimes never happen again, especially in a week when we know, uh, unfortunately, absolutely they happened again, with a certain R. Kelly, for twenty years they happened. Yeah, it, um, I mean it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's it's a it's a it's a vain hope, isn't it? it, it people always say this that it, it it never happens again, but it it's it's a ridiculous thing to say if you think about it, really. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm not having a go at Jeff so much as no, well. It's no. slightly slightly overextending um, program promotion. What he can say is is that we are intrigued by these things and we want to understand more. And I think society, we have moved on, although I feel there will always be children who are more vulnerable, people, uh, uh, you know, kids in care, so-called, the so-called care of local authorities, which um, fine when it's fine, but when it fails, it's not 
worthy of the name care, is it? No. Um, no. And there'll always be uh, children of poorer parents who can't run to their local solicitor or barrister to, you know, um, and that's how Savile operated uh, uh, under the radar. I, I, I tell you what I will find fascinating, given that Coogan's background, I mean, he was obviously, he, he was a, an impressionist and, and worked in the early days on Spitting Image. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how he portrays Savile so that it doesn't become a caricature, a parody kind of impression. Yeah. Uh, mm. It's called the reckoning, uh, and they and they reckon. <laughs> uh, it'll be on uh, it'll be on BBC One by twenty twenty two. If you want to look out for that one, yes, uh, a bit of a wait from where we are at the moment. Okay, changing gear to the show we are putting on the uh, slab of comedy, uh, which is Nighty Night uh, from Julia Davis. So, uh, how did you feel when I said uh, Nighty Night was going under the knife of? comedy well yeah i mean as I, I think i mentioned at the end of last week I, it was one that i hadn't um I was a big fan of it and then hadn't seen it i haven't revisited it for years and years and years so mm. it, it, it's one of those where you kind of think was it was it as good or um you know i remember it as one thing was it was it that or or not um so yeah a bit, bit a bit of trepidation but um uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to give too much away because when I watched it, mm. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> I, I think I've got to do a confessional at this point, which makes me look very silly, but not for the first time, you might think, which is that I, I think I'd um, not been aware of a second series. And when I decided which episode to put on the slab, I was thinking, I was confusing the end of the second series, which is this one, Series 2, Episode 6, with mm. Series 1, Episode 6, which I had seen and thought marvellous. Um, so imagine my brain trying to catch up with what the hell has gone on in the previous <laughs> five episodes, not having seen them. <laughs> Terrible confession, but I felt I had to uh, come clean, as it were. And in fact, uh, this is why the second viewing is always useful, always particularly useful for me in this context, which is I started to really appreciate it as its own show rather than going, who the hell, is, what the, what yeah. happened before? And, and actually it does, it doesn't completely stand on its own because they're not self-contained episodes, but it made a hell of a lot more sense. And I was able to enjoy some, some fantastic lines, which hopefully we'll enjoy together, but we don't know until um, we hear your reaction and indeed your headline, the other side of uh, the first of two clips. So we've got Re Re Rebecca Front is uh, also in this show, as is uh, Angus Deason, with his wonderful bubbly blonde hair. That was a he delight looks, He himself. looks good with the hair, dude, doesn't he? I thought oh, that, he does. actually. He it does. suits him. Um, yeah. I think the expression the kids use, uh, uh, which probably means it's the parents now, because I'm always behind the curve, uh, he rocked that look, I think they say. Someone does. <laughs> um, anyway, we join them at the breakfast table. And uh, so it's sort of black comedy, bleak comedy, dark comedy. Uh, is it satire even? Uh, that's uh, Julia Davis's uh, thing. So um, imagine what their idea or her idea of breakfast TV is while you're enjoying your cereal. What are we watching? It's just your birth, Cathy. Goodness. I just thought because these lot missed it. Who's dead? He doesn't want to look at his mother's privates over his crunchy nuts. Oh, I wish we'd shaved your cat. Okay, I'll tell you. Here I am. She's sweetie. fine, Catherine. Good, Catherine. Right, it's fine, I've got her. I've got her, thank you. Come on, Lily. Support the head, Catherine. Yes, I support know. Support the head, Catherine. I know, Jill. Support the head, Catherine. Thank you, Jill. Support her all yes, time. Yes, she's fine, I know. I don't say. I do already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Abigail. Oh, oh okay. Come on. Come on, sweetie. She's not logging on, is she, Cathy? Not yet. No, no, she's not logging on. This happens in your late 50s, Cathy. The nipple will become a dagger. Goodness sake. <laughs> I am the last one down again. Oh, Sue. <laughs> so Lazy boots. Very sorry. <laughs> You're off to Vickers and Tart, so. Sue so and... Um, Vicar, oh no, I've gone their separate ways, haven't you? Since his conviction. Mm. 
I think it's being a parent. You learn all the terminology, and it made me laugh out loud when she said she's not logging on. She said she's not latching on. She's not. She's not log. She's not logging on. Is she, Kathy? Not logging on. Um, it's to me logging on is computers because I don't have kids. But yeah, yeah, no latching. Latching, latching is right. On so she's got the wrong yeah. term. Has she? She's got the wrong term. Yeah. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's not logging on, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's. Um, it really is where dark humour meets surrealism isn't it it's um and, and i always thought mm. that's where it was unique is that it's it is um it's it is so dark and harrowing but it also is surreal it's it becomes it because it kind of goes out the other end and becomes ridiculous doesn't it in a way you know the, the situations mm. um let me give you a headline um like i say it's been a long long time uh since i watched this so i came up with nighty night Still all right. Oh, still all right. Yeah, excellent. Um, it, it's it's the same. What's going on, isn't there? And it's interesting you say as well. You know, we we kind of forewent all the other episodes ahead of this, <laughs> and the the thing that struck me the most about it was um, how it, the ridiculousness was was creeping. So that when you watched it, it didn't seem so ridiculous. But when you just plunge into one episode like it was like what is she wearing what was the outfit she was wearing what was that <laughs> sort of french maid get up wasn't it it was it, it's, but, it's, a, it's a menage a trois to um c continue the french theme isn't it but yeah. um, actually it was it looked a bit more sort of dutch didn't it it's sort of national dress type yeah. thing <laughs> it's a weird but i don't know because i hadn't seen the previous episodes i have have to see this series um, I, it made me want to go out and get Edam cheese. I don't know about you. I, I kind of uh, it was yeah. that, that kind of thing going on there. I, really, I think that does uh, reinforce the Netherlands type uh, thing. But essentially, she's um, <laughs> she's carrying on with Angus Deaton. Um, but there's a further twist because uh, uh, someone else is carrying on with him as Felicity well. Felicity Montague's character is yeah. carrying on with him as well. He's 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 well carried on, isn't he? Really, but um, I do wonder whether. It's it's kind of too too much watching it again. I think I don't know whether it's is it too much. Do you think? Did you get that well, overload try, feeling? Trying too hard to be dark and perverse. Yeah, there is a bit of that, and there's a bit of it's almost right. She started out one imagines, or you you could imagine she starts with a question: where how can I make this show as weird as possible and as distant from any sort of We've talked about it before, you know, the normal uh, domestic sitcom, which used to be the default. Mm. Um, but the, th the, the, the potential hazard of being radical is that it's like a, a state of constant revolution. You know, when a new, um, when, you know, the new guard replaced the old guard, then eventually the new guard become the old guard, don't they? Yeah. So your, your state of permanent revolution itself can tire a bit because it's oh right well she did this in the last series and that was pretty weird um i mean you know she's only gone to two series and i i, I think there's so much going on that uh, uh I, I didn't find that question echoing around my um m my mind for too much and, and and there were laughs even not knowing how we got there uh there were laughs uh sufficient i would say so that's that's a minor problem, and it's not like she's coming out with a new series every five minutes. It's, I'm thinking of things like there was in that scene. There was a point where she says to uh, to Don, she said, "Can I top up your sausages, Don?" And she <laughs> and she's pouring sausages out of a jug. Yeah, and I kind of thought, is that? Are, are we just kind of, uh, you know, is, is that, that just perverse for perverse's sake? Mm, it's just a bit too too. I mean, for a man who likes his reality did you not did you not kind of <laughs> well no you've decided that you've decided no, you you i mean <laughs> like you were you were upset because last week you thought a writer would would live in a less modest house than he had and now you're bat not batting an island when somebody's pouring a jug of sausages on somebody well, I mean, but that, that's the genius of junior davis <laughs> to make you think i didn't even notice i i did clock it but actually, it reminds me, it brings me straight back to St Steve Coogan and Alan Partridge. Do you not remember when he's 
eating beans and sausages which have come out of a tin but they've gone into a mug and he's on the doorstep of our George doors- friend isn't he yeah michael's uh, <laughs> yeah played play by so do you know i've got to tell you actually i was watching an old episode of um alas smith and jones well that is you know, a you know, few years ago mel smith and griff Reese jones mm. and one of the writers on that was simon greenall who plays oh. Michael in, in Partridge. And you kind of think, God, these guys have been going for years, haven't they, really, writing sketches and gags and stuff. Mm. Um, but, yeah, um, what I noticed in this episode was that, and I don't know whether you noticed this, it's only Kath, who's played by um, um, Rebecca, Rebecca Front, Front. Own, she's the only character that actually really reacts to Jill. Julia Davis's character, everybody else is kind of so worn down by her, done with her, used to her, mm-hmm. that they don't really react in the same way. Yeah. Um, I hadn't thought of it in that way, but I, I did think, and I do think, I just love the way, although it's terribly sad, the way Rebecca Front is just ultra English and trying yeah. to be nice all the time and trying to find the good in every situation, even when her baby is snatched spoiler alert, by Julia Davis. She's still trying to understand it and be compassionate. Yeah. It's a Baby Cow production in association with Oxygen Media. Baby Cow we know of old, uh, the wonderful Steve Coogan, previously mentioned, and Henry Normal. Baby Cow being a calf, calf being Pauline calf, Paul calf, see where it all came from. Um, Steve Coogan, inveterate watchers. Interesting, she, she worked with Coogan um, in 98, I think it was. 98? Oh, I saw him on, around that time. Um, but not with Julia Davis. It was pretty much solo, as I recall. I saw him in the West End. Would have been late 90s. I just thought it was a very strong show, including the uh, the, the calves and the, the staple of characters he had then. Didn't he? Um, he used to, when he first went out on tour, Coogan, he was with John Thompson and Simon Pegg. And Julia oh, okay. Davis, um, in some of the early in the early tours, but um, uh, but yeah, when she, but she got the the uh, the big train gig through Chris Morris because Chris Morris was the director of Big Train, right? So um, and then and, it kind uh, of all went all went from there. She she was appeared in Jam and Blue Jam and Brass Eye and various other bits and pieces. Now, no googling and no cheating, unless you've already googled and cheated. Do you yeah. know who her partner is? Yeah, I, I knew. I knew. I think we talked about oh. this when um, when we did um, Sally Forever. I'd forgotten actually. Julian Barrett then. So mm. um, one half of the Boosh. The Boosh, yeah. Wow, that's a surreal relationship. <laughs> if ever yeah. there was, but their breakfast times are nearly as much fun as what we've just heard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Script wise, again. I mean, laugh out loud for you was there? Were there? I mean, they certainly had a lot of fun making it. You've only got to look at the uh, the outtakes that are on YouTube available for oh, this. Oh gosh, I will have to look at that. No, I, I haven't seen those. Um, we should link to those on on the twits, shouldn't we? Um, <laughs> laugh out loud. Corpses. Yes. Uh, when you say scripting, that would include visual laugh laughs out loud. Uh, we we haven't mentioned him yet, but Mark Gatiss has <laughs> got quite a role. He looked like a what was the quote? It looks like a burnt Ken Dodd. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you'll see why, dear uh, listener, if you get to see uh, Series 2, Episode 6. Apparently, he, he wears what I would call comedy vicar teeth. And mm. uh, and apparently, I saw an interview uh, when he was talking about it. And, he, and he, he, apparently, he got the teeth he got. They were from wardrobe of League of Gentlemen. Um, oh, wow. So he'd already got... He said, I already can't, I brought the teeth with me. So uh, we... <laughs> Part of his uh, comedy chops. But well. Yeah, comedy ch- and talking about his chops. And he's got this, um, his character, uh, Glenn Bulb, what a great name, um, has yeah. got this huge, huge tick, hasn't he? He's got this huge thing where he's his whole head and his mouth open. And uh, Have we seen a, a tick, albeit not on that scale, in League of Gentlemen? Or am I imagining it? Do you know, that rings a bell. I know you said it now. It's one of those where you kind of think, oh, yeah, where have I seen that before now? But I think he's turned it up to 11 or indeed 12 in this. Yeah. Does that does that work for you? I mean, his character, his whole, his whole, 
he's 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 very naive, isn't he? Particularly sexually naive, his character, and because oh, yes. she just she just capitalizes on that and just and just plays him for everything he's worth. <laughs> Well, she's 11 months pregnant, which doesn't seem to raise any alarm bells with him, um, talking of the naivety. Yeah. Uh, and also the baby pops back up there, apparently. So yeah. <laughs> I've not heard them go into reverse. Oh, didn't he say at the time, can, can, can that happen, Jill? <laughs> <laughs> he's got his suspicions. <laughs> yeah, he's not, not quite sure, is he? Well, he in, fact, in fact, we're going to um, hear that. Uh, shall we hear that uh, clip now, which is, um, well, for me, it sort of, it, it shows itself, this clip, because th this scene is, well, it is, uh, as you say, it's not merely the, uh, the, uh, Climax, if I may use that word, of uh, of this particular episode, but indeed of series two and both series, you could say, because uh, we can say with some certainty that no more series uh, for at least 15 years thereafter. Um, and we're not aware of any plans for series three. So um, what do I need to say? Well, what I've called this clip, I try and give myself clues to gently prompt my tired brain. And uh, as well as saying CS168, which is Comedy Slab episode 168 and 99, um, this clip I've called The Booner Birth. So we've got um, Glenn Bulb on the outside of the toilet door. And uh, on the inside, we have at least one person uh, who is the Julia Davis uh, character. Uh, but there could be someone else as well, maybe an assistant. <laughs> Oh, Jill, I don't believe a word you say anymore. Oh, no, I'm serious, Glenn. I don't want you to see me like this. Oh, Jill, you know, I'd see you any which way, even if you, you split your tinkle and have to be stitched up like an association football. Oh, oh God, Glenn. What is it? Oh, oh, my God. Jill, Jill. It's my portrait. What about them? They're breaking, Glenn. Oh, Jill, oh, let me God. in. Let me help you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Glenn. Yeah, yeah. I, I can feel it. It's going to happen. Yeah. Oh. 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 It's, it's, is that the, the fluid that's in the books? It's the amnesic sack. Oh, my God, the plug's come out. Oh. Oh, God. What, what, oh, my God. What's this, Jill? Jill, Jill, oh, let's make sure they... Jill, Jill. Who's in there with you, Jill? It, it's my spirit guide. Oh. Is he a red Indian? Oh. Oh! Maybe he's got a cauliflower out here. Oh my god, that's his ear, Glenn! <laughs> Maybe he's going to be a rugby player! There's going to be quite oh. a lot of oh. sorts out here. There's a wee bit oh. of potato. Oh, Glenn, it's a bloodbath in here! Oh, it's like a lambooner out here. Oh god. See, that was my least favourite scene out of the, uh, out the whole episode. I, I just thought that was just way, way too much. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, really. I couldn't have known that, but... Um... No, it, 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 I just, by that point, I just, it just felt really overplayed, really overdone, um, r ridiculous to the point of um, unbelievability, I think, was the, was, was the feeling I had. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get that then, no? Um, no, cause I just, I'd long since bought into uh, the ridiculousness. Well, I, th I think I might have struggled more in the, f the the first one. I struggled to hear some of the lines as well. There's a lot of, um, not so much there because they've got raised voices, um, but uh, sometimes there, there's a, a there's throwaway stuff that um, is a, a bit mumbly. But I I got it uh, on on the second listen. But um, not everyone obsessively watches episodes twice in the way we do. No, no. Uh, well, accentuate the positive. Can you think of any high points for you in the episode if you didn't like that particular scene? Um, <clears throat> I think from then on, I didn't think it, I thought it went downhill. I didn't. The first half certainly for me uh, was better. And it's like you said, you know, when they were talking about <laughs> when they were saying I saw a strange man who looked like a burnt Ken dog. <laughs> I mean, was just you know, it was just laugh out loud, funny, isn't it? That sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But as it got more, I felt towards the end of the episode, it was it almost felt like um, a deadline looming, and and you could, you could hear her writing it, and she was kind of like, "Oh, I haven't got time to type these loose ends." And I mean, I won't mention the the very final scene, but the final scene, you kind of think, I, I don't know, 
it just it just all felt like it was it was very rushed. But the first half of it, I thought, it was really really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, there's a strong supporting cast there, isn't there? As well, you mentioned Angus Deaton, uh, Ruth Jones, who plays her sidekick Linda, oh, yeah. who's who's a bit bit challenged. Um, Shall we say? Uh, uh, am I right in thinking she doesn't say a single word in this episode? It was certainly very economically spoken. Yeah, she does in other episodes, doesn't she? She's, um, mm. but yeah, there, there isn't. She hasn't got a lot to say now. <laughs> and and the other thing as well, um, uh, Angus Deaton's other girlfriend, Don's other girlfriend, um, mm. was Felicity Montague, of course, who yes. who who played Lynn uh, in uh, I'm Alan Partridge. I was I was pleased to see Felicity have a chance to, um, shall we say, be a bit sexier than Lynn. Yes. <laughs> Although it it is you know because this is not a game of subtlety um it's at the other end of the scale isn't it very much yeah yes <laughs> it is it is very much over the top and a brief appearance from miranda hard did you see that as I well i did it's, indeed uh, it's but it's almost blink and you miss it um yeah. i hope she's got a bit more of a substantial role earlier in the series i can't remember whether she had or not no, i interviewed her dad actually did i tell you it's uh, david no. uh, david he, hart died a naval man ford in Captain. the falklands yeah. Captain, yeah, yes, he was. He was. Um, he was the commanding officer of HMS Coventry, uh, which he ship, his command was sunk during the Falklands War. He was a terrible uh, a, experience. Yeah, and, and, war hero, am I right yeah. in thinking that um, he really wrestled with the guilt of that, as you yes, might expect? Yeah. Yeah, it, it it was fabulous. I think he's in his eighties now. I think he's about eighty one, eighty two, something like that. But, um, but yeah, fabulous interview. I mean, he was, um, you know, he was just he was very, very candid, very frank. Mm. Uh, and I think, yeah, you're right. I think anyone who's been through those kind of, it's all very well us talking about it. But if you've been through that situation, it's um, nobody knows but you, do they? Really, I think. But yeah, yeah. I think he, I think there were demons, definitely. But. Mm. Um, Smashing guy, really, really, uh, really. I wonder if guy. those demons converted into uh, some kind of comedy driver for Miranda, or whether I'm being a, an amateur psycho sleuth and getting it all wrong, of course. Yeah, you don't, you don't know how much. You, I mean, particularly with naval personnel, they're all of their problems are away from home, aren't they? Away from the family, so you don't know how much she was shielded. I suppose, really. Mm. Um, but. Um, I tell you who I really liked in it, and 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 I thought he he played a, a a really really great role. Was Angus Deaton? I thought I thought he was fabulous throughout. I think he was, even though again he's one of these actors who he does Angus Deaton, doesn't he? In a way, he does. Um, well, he was in that um, previously mentioned uh, pilot I worked on with Pete Sinclair as the writer, and mm. uh, that's going back quite a few comedy slabs. So. Um, um, just park that for now, but that was interesting, and and he seemed the least actorly, shall we say, which is not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily either a compliment or an insult, but just I felt we, he I got the sense that he comes from a much more sort of presentational direction, um, as was the case on the um, Have I Got News for You, you know, as a chair there, yeah. sort of ad libbing type. Um, his stock was very high at that stage. But yeah, no, I thought he played it. I think I I really like him as an actor, and I think he's um, I think he's a great asset to any any comedy production. But um, but again, yeah. quite quite underplayed here, and and not that many words. Uh, I mean, a few more than Ruth Jones, but that's not saying much. No, no. Uh, but uh, I think, in fairness, I mean, from what I remember of his role, he's he had a much bigger role earlier on. But he's just he's just absolutely I mean, this is the thing about her as a character is that she just wears everybody down, doesn't she? And I think he's just absolutely <laughs> frazzled. I mean, he's gone through some kind of breakdown by the look of it. Um where, you know, he's grown his hair long and shaggy like some kind of surfer dude and, and you know, he's but he's been he's put through the absolute in his late thirties or early forties, I would say. Yeah, but he's been put through the ringer by the Julia Davis character, hasn't he, by Jill? Mm. Um, and you know she's she's absolutely driven people to the to the verge or to the point of insanity. You know, and uh, I think that's the thing is that you sit there and you watch it, and I think you, that is the believable part of it. And I think it's a shame when it kind of gets ridiculously um, almost farcical. Mm. Because I don't think it needs to. Because I think it's you know the the characters are so well drawn that you can you know she's. I spent the entire time. I don't know whether you did this as well, but I'm thinking I I 
what is she, what is her motivation? Because she doesn't get a lot out of the manipulation that she inflicts on other people. So I'm thinking, is she a narcissist? Is she a psychopath? Is she a sociopath? Is she just purely criminal? You know, what? I, th- what I think is- she's all of the above, actually. Um, I think it's just control, isn't it? If you look at where it ends up, again, without uh, spoiling it for everyone, mm. she is ultimately, unquestionably, where she wants to be in terms of control. Mm. And and I think the other thing is I was reading a while ago, <clears throat> I read something about a psychopath, and they said the big thing about the the makeup of the psychopath is that they, they think that everything is a game and they have to win it. Mm. And that kind of sums her up, doesn't it, really? You know, this kind of she's she's got to she's got to win. She doesn't really want any of the things that she wins, but she's just got to win it to say that she won it. I guess so, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I, it's a fascinating. I do, I do think it's a fascinating premise. I think the whole thing is, um, you know, to watch it from the start. If you listed, I think if you watch it from the start and listed all the things that happen, you'd say, "Oh, that's ridiculous! You can't, you, you can't write all that into into a series." But I think that's where she she wins is because she does manage to do that, and she does manage to do it in a reasonably plausible way. And I think she only strays from the, the straight and narrow occasionally. And I think you know. It's 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 fair enough, isn't it? Really, when you're trying to when you're trying to shoehorn all those kind of madcap things in, that mm. you are going to cross the line at some point, you know. Uh, yes, if indeed she quite knows where the line is, yeah. uh, she certainly pushes it um, uh, where she wants it. Uh, one's always inclined to mischievously think uh, how much of uh, Jill is actually. Uh, uh, Julia Davis, but that might be an unkind thing to ask. But certainly, she's she's attracted to this kind of darkness again and again, as we're saying. I think. I mean, this is my own. I've got. I'm basing it on nothing other than a gut feel. Mm. But I, I think it's somebody that she knew. I I think it's too it's too well defined and well drawn mm. for it not to have significant elements of somebody that she knew or knows or knew at one point. Uh, and you know, and I and I do wonder whether the kind of West Country accent is is reality. Is that the the person actually spoke like that? That's 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 what I I don't know. Well, it's I not a Guildford be... accent. She started out in Guildford, but then she did move to Bath or Bath. So there is something of that one would imagine in her accent anyway, perhaps, although she was 14 by then. Uh, Intriguing. I'm not sure we're going to get the answer because it would end up in court if we did actually find the person, if indeed such a person exists, that uh, Jill is based on. I mean, when I say the person, I mean, yeah, like the basis of her. I mean, I don't think, you know, somebody that goes around um, throwing wheelchairs off cliffs and and, and various Uh, other things. And calling herself Jill Tyrrell. Probably not. Actually, her name. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we can speculate away, but I think it is time to mark out a five each and uh, see what we make of it. I think it's probably my turn to go first, isn't it? Okay. Um, I'm going to give it a juicy four without oh. too much hesitation because, uh, yeah, I just bought into that world and uh, she tickles my funny bone, uh, raises all the questions we've raised, but. Uh, still provides some laughs even if you haven't watched as it turns out the previous five episodes yeah um i wouldn't in fact i was gonna say i wouldn't disagree with you i would actually agree with you in in reality i'd give it a four as well and i think i'd I'd give it a four for for the simple reason that i think it's it is it's one of the one of the special comedies it's one of the ones that if you had to if you were curating a um, a hall of comedy and you wanted to put things like porridge and uh, faulty towers probably would always have to go in there, um, and and various things you know various comedies like I'm Alan Partridge, uh, Only Fools and Horses, you know all all of the ones that kind of are the backbone of our comedy, if you like. I th- I think it would get in there. I really wow. do. I do. I think I think it's it's a piece of work that 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 more than more than stands up for itself um but yeah i I'll, I'll give it a four but you so have some uh, sorry yes eight out of ten uh, but very quickly you slightly wrong-footed me there and i think more than um the odd listener because 
uh, I think they might be surprised that you were that generous in the end, given all your reservations about her pushing it too far. I, well, I think you know the. the... <sighs> Those are to me. That's just a, that's a personal thing where I think, oh, this is this is a bit silly now. And but you know, it was it was one scene out of the whole episode where there was that and the fact that that I didn't think it ended very well. Um, and I don't want to go too deeply into that because it'll ruin it for people if they, if they want to watch it. But I I didn't think it ended very well. And that scene where you know all the the curries coming underneath the door and they're pretending that it's the uh, she's having a baby and all the rest of it. I thought, mm, no, that's t- that was a bit too much, but it didn't it didn't kind of ruin it for me in that sense. And and also, I have to you have to kind of look at the 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 rest of the series, certainly, and the series before it as well. Mm. Um, uh, again, you know, a little bit of a cheat, but you, we kind of know it, and and you you know what it's capable of, and I think. As a finale, as a last one in a series, it, it's it was a bit disappointing, but you you got to take your hat off to the series, I think. Mm. Oh, nice one. Okay, so eight out of ten. Cats would prefer whiskers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So onward and upward to homework for next week. Mm. I am a gog. Oh, I'm sorry. And I thought... <laughs> the country needs more gogs. Yes, it certainly does. I thought, because um, we try and mix it up, don't we, a bit of radio, a bit of TV and, you know, mm. whatever else, a bit of old, bit of new. Um, and I thought, because you've gone kind of old school-ish, mm. um, I thought, oh, let's have a look and see what's happening in the modern world. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I thought, okay, I'm going to choose something that's actually um, airing at the moment. And um, I've chosen a thing. I don't really know much about it. I've not seen it. Um, all I've seen is the artwork. I haven't even seen a trailer for it. Mm. Um, and all I know is that it's um, written by a woman called Sophie Willen. <clears throat> and it's called Alma's Not Normal. Mm. Uh, have you seen this at all? I confess I watched... Uh, five minutes of it and then a mate of mine uh, recommended it and I thought oh, I can't face him unless I've tried to watch the whole of it and then uh, lo and behold this comes along um, so uh, I only need to do one more viewing or might I do two anyway um, so yes I am familiar with it oh okay well so you've got you've got yeah, the, the start on me you've got the jump on me with this one um, but I thought, well, just because we don't know anything about it, Series 1, Episode 1, Alma's Not Normal. Mm. Well, intriguing title, and um, I have plenty to say about it, but I'm not going to say it here. Super. So that is, uh, well, you'll find that on BBC iPlayer as we speak. Uh, it depends how soon after this recording you're listening. But uh, anyway, look out for that. Um and uh, since we've come to me, I might as well do anti-social media. We are at Comedy Slab on Twitter. And also at Comedy Slab is uh, our Facebook page. You see, that's uh, in, a, in a week where the whole of Facebook fell over. It's, it, we, we split the difference and um, we've got a leg in both camps, a foot in both camps. So uh, it's unlikely, though not impossible, that Twitter will fail at the same time as Facebook. So you should find us out there somewhere in cyberspace uh, and in the real world if you'd be kind enough to recommend us to friends and family uh, work colleagues and so on that'd be lovely and also um, Apple Podcasts stroke iTunes if you give us a good uh, generous star rating there and a nice bit of blurb saying in no more than well no as many words as you want as many <laughs> as you can get away with <laughs> why you like the show assuming you do um, then that would be wonderful too thank you very much uh, don't forget, if you want to catch up with us anywhere, really, on uh, on the, all the other platforms, such as Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, YouTube, and as they used to say on the KTL adverts, if you don't know, Google it, uh, <laughs> and on uh, many, many more, uh, all you have to do is put in at Comedy Slab, uh, all one word, at Comedy Slab, and you can find us there and uh, get the, get cracking through the back catalogue as well. So if, you, if, you're, uh, if your Twitter does fail, Mm. Um, you can just sit there and just go back through the back catalogue of the Comedy Slab, can't you? That's something to uh, something to do. Yes. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I'm off to get a uh, waxing uh, with Ken Dodd, um, knew, which will mean, was, mean more once you've was, seen it. I knew we were going to end up talking about <laughs> waxing. There's, she's got this morbid fascination with waxing, hasn't she? There's like more than two, three references to it. She, she loves those got, lady parts. And I don't got a mean wax. that uh, series yeah. of that name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 